Rescue on Fractalus, uh, which is a re-release of the Activision game, which was created by LucasArts, or Lucasfilm Games as they were called back in those days. Uh, originally released in 1985 and re-released on the Mastertronic Plus branding. Okay, here's the packaging then. And uh, the front cover illustration is quite indicative of the gameplay, as you'll see when we go to the back cover. I'm not sure if this was the original game cover from the original release or not, um, but it's certainly got uh, the hallmarks of an early video game cover, I think. And the Mastertronic Plus logo is at the bottom there. And on the spine, it's pretty basic text. Confirmation that this was a £2.99 game, as expected with Mastertronic Plus. And on the back, we've got the screenshots which as you can see are a cockpit view and a little bit of information about the game effectively you've got to go and rescue pilots from Fractalus I suppose and if we take a look inside the packaging we've got confirmation at the top there that uh, this game was originally published by Lucasfilm and Activision uh, gives you more information about the mission and what you need to do when you land and levels and the controls which look quite complicated actually and then we've got foreign language versions of the instructions and that's pretty much it So here's a title screen and it's uh, fairly unspectacular but it does the job. Uh, there's a couple of options on the screen. You can change the level you want to start on, uh, which I'm going to start on level one. Uh, actually that's it, that's the only option. Um, so um, music's pretty good, it's kind of you know typical of the uh, sort of space warrior kind of tune that you might get on these kind of games. So not bad. So let's get a game started. <clears throat> so you get this nice introduction as you launch down towards the planet from your cockpit. And then you blast out into space from the mothership. And eventually you'll land on the planet. There we go. There's the horizon of the planet coming into view. Okay, so the planet materialises and the idea is to rescue the pilots and there's one coming up right in front of me there, you can see the little green blob marking him and also he appears on these scanners as well and when you get close to him you press L to land and then you have to switch your systems off so you don't fry him with the engines and hopefully if he's in range, there you go, it tells you if he's in range and he runs towards the ship which is a nice little animation bangs on the door of the airlock so you press A to open the airlock and he closes it himself which is good and that's it that's one guy rescued and then you switch your systems back on and you can use the left and right greater than and less than keys to uh, increase the thrust on your ship so there's another sh ship coming up on the scanner here this first level is very easy it's a training level so just get another guy same procedure if you don't open the airlock in time then he runs out of air and dies so quite important to do that if you want to get the points now it says mothership at the top of the screen which means you can beam back up to the mothership just have a bit of a fly around the landscape to take that in before we do that I think <coughs> So 
So you can see it's pretty slow moving landscape as you'd expect. I mean, but it's a for the era, it's pretty good to idea in terms of trying to generate a 3D landscape that you can fly around obviously it's not very detailed but you do get the illusion of flying around the landscape it's a bit slow to refresh but it's not bad just try and pick up another guy you don't actually have to land so you can see them in view as long as they're close enough this one might not be actually pilot too far away so it tells you that the pilot's too far away so you just switch your systems back on and try and get him in range. So we just round to the left here, just round the corner. There we go. Here he comes. Okay, that's another guy rescued. I think that's enough of a demonstration of how to play the game. Let's move on to a slightly more difficult level now. And you do that by going up into the sky and pressing B, which gets you back to the mothership. Back into space. And that's the first level completed. And so you move on to the next level. Sound effects are not too bad. Nice sort of thrusting sort of noise. Now on the second level there's a bit more to do because there's things that shoot at you now so you've got to shoot back. So let's start off by seeing if we can find something to shoot at. At the moment in the early levels you just have these laser towers in various places on the tops of the mountains funnily enough. So let's see if we can find one of those. Or a pilot. Or anything. There we go. Here's a laser turret on the top of here. It's firing green beams at me. So you just kind of get close to it and try and shoot it. There we go, got it. And there's another one just up there as well, so let's get that one. There we go, now I'm quite near to a, a pilot as well. Somewhere. Can't see where he is, but I can see him on my scanner. There he is, just in the bottom corner there. I like the sound effects of him um, banging on the door of the ship to be let in and the airlock opening and closing. They're quite cool. Right, so I'm now on level four, which is where things start to get a little bit more tricky. Because there's a lot more stuff that shoots at you now. As you can see, something's shooting at me straight away. What? Got you. There are a lot of dials on the cockpit, and I wasn't sure all of them actually meant anything, but I think they all do. I think. And you've now got UFOs coming out after you as well, just to make life even more difficult.
So uh, that tells you how close you are to picking up a, a rescue ship. This one's how many enemies you've killed, and this one's how many people you've got to rescue. Um, so the, everything on the on the cockpit dashboard does actually mean something, which is quite impressive, really. To begin with, it's quite tricky to get a grip with all the controls, but you do soon get into the groove of playing it, and it's uh, it's quite good fun. I mean, it is just a high score game, effectively, as you can see the score in the top right corner. But it is it's good fun, um, marauding your way around the landscape, shooting stuff, and rescuing people. So uh, graphics are, are cool, if a bit sluggish. The refresh rate's a little bit slow, to say the least. Um, but for a game of this era to give you this sort of immersion in the game is quite an impressive thing. So I'd definitely say it's worth to the two ninety nine asking price for the re-release. It was probably worth a full price when it first came out. In fact, in nineteen eighty five. Right, so I'm still playing, I'm now on level 5, and it's getting a lot more tricky because there's a lot more stuff shooting at me. Uh, I just wanted to add one thing to what I've already said, which is obviously that it is a good game. Um, I'm not really sure why the planet's called F Fractalus. Because um, there's not really what I'd call fractal generated landscapes or maybe it was in those days I don't know fractals to me were always very colorful um, it's just a, a moot point really because it doesn't stop it being a good game I just wondered why the planet was actually called that hmm I think I think that UFO just crashed into me then but as you can see from the landscape There's a lot more stuff shooting at you now, making it a bit more tricky. Um, but in summary, it's a great little game. It's well worth checking out if you've got a bit of time to spend on it. A bit more depth than your average game for sure. Uh, and addictive stuff as well, to be honest. Yeah, so uh, check it out.